All right, well, let's stick with FX. So for the US dollar, is coming off its worst month since 2010. Every major currency strengthened against the green bag following its surge in March. That volatility is coming at a cost to corporate earnings. Wolfgang Kester is a senior strategist at Kyriba, where he analyzes currency risk for companies. So as we talk about potentially the demise of American exceptionalism, both politically as well uh, as in financial markets, do you see a risk now in terms of the position of the US dollar uh, great to have you thank you for having me um, I see the biggest risk for corporations and as you know we talk to lots of corporations around the world to get their input as well and we give them then our analytics and what we're seeing here is an uncertainty of the direction but certainty about volatility so we're really looking for corporations to really protect them and as you well know about one third of the participants in the uh, currency markets are non-speculators which are the corporates right i, I find it intriguing on, on the other side uh, when we look at what's going on with some of the you know the currency pairs you say one of the biggest risks is china being very good at weakening its currency this hasn't been the case for quite some time right even the u.s treasury was forced to take china off its currency manipulation target list because beijing doesn't do that anymore they don't actually want a weaker currency for their own reasons so why do you still think that's a relevant uh, i guess accusation or point to make so what I'm hearing from the CEOs and CFOs saying when we look at this is that actually we're switching from a trade war to a budget war. And in trade wars, you want your own currency co to go down and uh, you, the other everybody else's currencies to go up, which means that your products are cheaper and more competitive abroad. In the budget wars, what happens is when, corporate, when the uh, countries print money, they actually want their value to stay as high as possible. So what you're actually going to see, which is part of the volatility, it's a mind change, is that actually you're going to start getting a battle of countries to actually want to talk up their dollar. And people are still seeing this as opportunities to sell currencies, um, whereas in reality they need to be really cautious because the governments are going to want to have their, their currency as strong as possible in this budget war. And that's something we haven't seen, as you well know, for quite a few years now. Well, again, so we have seen now uh, the dollar on a downtrend, this GTV chart on the Bloomberg showing that we really fell to the lowest level in about two years already, uh, fifth consecutive a week of declines for the dollar. Who benefits the most when it comes to these companies? So um, the corporations, obviously, when you have a weaker dollar, it's obviously more competitive abroad. So the companies that have more uh, sales abroad are better off that way, clearly. So that's that's the simple uh, part of this thing. And then you have the companies um, that are not as well doing as well because they do most of their things uh, abroad. So all of a sudden their costs actually go up. So you, when you're analyzing your investments, you have to look at are they net actually exporters or net importers? If you, for example, look, and I know you're, you're also calling from New York, if you look at the S&P 500, You've got over 50% of the S&P 500 doing more than 50% of their business abroad. Typically, it's almost reaching 60%. So U.S. corporates will be more competitive in a lower dollar environment. But this is going to be um, opposing to the thought of the, of the United States government, which I think you will hear very shortly more and more rhetoric out of all governments of talking their currencies up. When the coronavirus pandemic first hit earlier this year, we saw the dollar surging in a, on a quarterly basis, I believe the most since 2016 or so. Who were the biggest hit and what currencies uh, exposure to these companies were the biggest detriment? Uh, which corporations and sectors are we talking about? Yeah, so, I mean, one is we actually, at the tail end, obviously, of March, we already saw volatility spike, and that added to a pretty large local or global loss of corporations. So what we do, we actually look at 800 North American and 400 European companies and analyze where they quantify the losses and then create and have done it for about seven years at Kyriba, um, actually look at what the trends are. What we saw 
in Q1 is already a pretty large hit of t- over $12 billion of corporates having losses. So that's a significant number. If you compare that, for example, in Q4, the uh, markets were pretty quiet and it was uh, less than $8 billion. Um, you've seen it as high as $22 billion. We actually expect Q2 to even have more of a fallout and having very large impacts. And investors need to be really cautious about what companies know how to manage their liquidity, including their currencies well, and which ones don't. And so they really have to look at active liquidity management, have to look at cash management, accounts receivable and accounts payable management, as well as currencies. And currencies are the easiest indicator. They're the easiest to find because they're actually required to identify in their quarterly as well as annual reports the exposures that they have. Mm, very interesting insights. Thank you so much for joining us, Wolfgang Kester, Senior Strategist with Kiriba.